Oleander Jr. after a while didn't get to hold back his greed and asked the chairman if he could have additional powers and control over the country. The chairman initially agreed but it had already detected deceit. The chairman then betrayed him and kept him in a cell as a pet. This made Oleander Jr. more and more spiteful of the chairman. Brent was still able to escape the chairman's forces. But Agent Rena endangered the escape ship by sabotaging it. The remaining SCP operatives, Jason and Keith, were not pleased with her decisions. They argued for a little bit, but Agent Rena's pride took over. She then broke her agreement with the two operatives. Two flying drone cicadas disabled the Ekranoplan and sedated Athena as they snatched her. Agent Rena thought she could have further access to anomalies if she went with these creatures. She could become one of the most famous SCP agents in modern history. So she went close to one drone and asked if she could join the chairman. But since she wasn't the target of the two cicada drones, she was stabbed in the chest. It was already too late when she realized her mistakes. Right as she was about to die, the drone threw her to the sea. Brent the survivors were left to die, but Brent was calm as they had escape boats prepared. One of the scenarios they had been fearing was this exact moment, and so Brent sent the emergency signal to April. They couldn't buy time anymore. Back in Dumalag, April quickly sent out Moning to go to the edge of Panginoon to fire a flare gun. Moning asked why, but April didn't give her a straight answer. While it wasn't clear, Moning felt that she needed to go and do this errand fast before they get caught outside by the cicadas and their machines. Moning and Ethan waited a long time, but nothing happened after the flare dropped from the sky. They went home immediately as there was also a typhoon warning. Livestock and crops would always get flooded in Dumalag, even with just a few hours of rain. It was important that she got home before the flood set in. Moning reported immediately to April that she had already shot the flare, and she made sure that she wasn't followed. As it was already late at night, they all went in, locked their doors and windows and braced themselves for the war that was about to happen in the midst of a storm. Will was brushing the mane of Mayari's horse when she called him for their last meal together. Mayari later on took Will to the face of the Panginron and opened the portal. Mayari and Will entered a middle dimension. Mayari then confessed that Siahari, the Nahimana god, was actually just a man, and the Sigalun was just a badge, a helmet made out of a special alloy from Panginroon itself. This was forged by Mayari thousands of years ago. Besides helping the user fly, it was just a well-made ancient helmet. But it represented everything special about Siahari. He was so good that his abilities and senses came very close to the abilities of a healthy aswang. Mayari took the helmet and faced Will. She explained what he needed to do in order to get Kate out of the middle dimension. As they exited the portal, they saw the signal flare. Will understood it immediately and looked up to Mayari and said thank you. Mayari gave Will a schematic that could further modify a reality bender. Because she was also the goddess of weaponry, she could immediately understand any sort of device that's used as a weapon and manipulate it. As Will was packing up his gear, Mayari saw that he also took his torn up cloak. She asked why he was still taking it with him, and Will looked at it fondly while dusting it off. My mom made this. He said. Newly converted cicada surrounded April's Dumalag compound. Rain and thunder weren't strong enough to deter all the monsters. 
Ethan watched from their window all the horrible scenes outside. He and Moning were initially excited to find proof of their existence, but now they couldn't sleep at all. They were terrified. The elders, however, were silently praying. They saw their aunt April, and she herself was calm. It was as if she knew what was going to happen next. The chairman finally got hold of Athena. Their machines froze her in suspended animation as they plugged her in a machine that was made in order to harness her abilities. While she wasn't able to move, her eyes could still perceive. Not a moment too soon, she caught a glimpse of her father Philomen, now turned into a cicada. It was then that all her hope was lost. 